Okay, so maybe your child comes home at the beginning of the school year and said that they took a test one-on-one -on -one with a teacher. That is our IPT. First, I will explain what the IPT actually means. I stands for IDEA. This is the name of a law that has been in the U.S. for probably six, seven, eight years, for, for a while. It was started by President Bush. It's a set of standards inside the United States for all students, ESL students, native speakers, for everybody and how well they should be able to read and speak. This test goes based on those standards. Uh, maybe you've heard the words, no child left behind. That's the nickname for this law. So we test their proficiency with um, their, their English proficiency in relation to the IDEA standards. And finally, yes, it is a test. So IPT stands for the IDEA Proficiency Test. Quickly, I would like to explain the history of IPT at the Tabakai. About four years ago, Mrs. Dalal and Mrs. Stark visited Elk Grove High School to observe their ESL classes. We're always trying to be better, always trying to learn new things. So they went, observed, and came back with the news that all ESL students at Elk Grove High School must take a proficiency test like IPT. So we're always trying to be better, we're trying to give a, a somewhat American experience, so we wanted to do a standard test just like that. I would like to explain how we give the IPT. First, it is done one-on-one, -on -one, one student, one teacher. We do this one time a year at the beginning of the year. Next, we use computers when we give the IPT. This is an example of what the teacher is reading from the computer. This is an example number 19. We show a picture and we read this question. As it says, in this picture, what is the boy doing right now? He, and then, this is what the student's response should be. A correct response is, he is reading, he's reading, he is looking at a book, he's looking at a book. We're focusing on the ING form there. The reason we use the computer is that the test that I'm giving is the same test that Ms. Hubbard is giving, same test that Mrs. Dalal is giving, Mrs. Stark, Mr. Roberts. We have to read this and the students have to answer this. And it's just correct or incorrect. It's just very easy for us. This test focuses on listening and speaking, not reading, not writing. The reason is listening and speaking are the first two steps when you learn a new language. Sometimes we have students who come straight from Japan with no English ability. So step three, which is reading, and step four, which is writing, is far too difficult for them. It can be very stressful. So also, we focus on reading and writing, well, sorry, we don't focus, but we test their reading and writing in our classes based on each level. I want to explain why we give the IPT. First, it is to track progress. We are hoping, of course, to see students get better throughout the year. We see your children on a daily basis so we can see how they do every day. We see how they do every week with tests and quizzes. Then we see first term, third, second term, third term with Ichigaki, Nigaki, Sankaki with the report card. But the IPT is focused on the whole year. This is a large map for us to look at. Next, this helps grade the teachers. 
If we see the student's scores going down, then we have to adjust how we are teaching. This helps keep the teachers connected to what we teach and it makes us want to always do better. Next, it is to help find specific needs. We use a curriculum in our classes, but sometimes if all the students miss one question that is not in our curriculum, we can address that question. Also, sometimes if a, if a student seems to be missing the same style of questions, we can address that with that student. Finally, this helps us make our groups or levels. Please remember that we focus on many different factors when making levels, not just the IPT. We prefer to look at what they did last year, where they're coming from, what they do on a daily basis. But the IPT, of course, helps us double check that we made the right decision. When you come to visit our classes next week, you will get a sheet, a printout of your child's individual score. You will see a graph like this on the sheet. This explains where they tested in relation to the IPT standards. First we have NES, this stands for non-English speaker. These might be children that come just from Japan with no English class whatsoever or no English background whatsoever. Next, LES stands for limited English speakers. These students generally have some English ability, but where they, it's kind of a, it's more of a middle ground. Finally, at the end, we have only one section of FES, that stands for Fluent English Speakers, usually students who are at or near a native level. Kids who might have studied really hard or been at an American school for a while. And even within that, there are different groups. And as you can see, like stairs, it is a step up process. We are hoping to see that your students step up through the years. Also on that sheet, on the back, you will see, this was level D. You will see a description of level D or whatever level your student is at and the list of skills they are able to perform. You will also see a list of skills from the other levels. If you have any questions about IPT, please feel free to ask during the question and answer session today or ask, your, with your, I'm sorry, ask the English teacher on an individual basis when you come next week. Thank you.